Hi, everybody, and thanks for joining me. Dr. Ben Shimoyo, the LA Chiropractor. Uh, first off, I want to thank you for choosing our office, and I hope our staff and I really serve you well. Our commitment here is to really make an impact on your life, uh, whether it's to restore health or get you out of pain. Uh, this little video here is really important for you to understand what the process of your care plan is here in our office. We used to do this in the office, but now we know that nowadays everybody is busy and we want to make sure that you get to see these videos. Um, and it's hard to take time to come to our office. We used to have a dinner. We used to have lunches. Very challenging with your busy schedule. So thanks for joining me. Uh, over the next few uh, minutes together and a few series of this video, new patient orientation, what we're going to do is have a clear, defined understanding of what we're doing in the office for you and what we can do for your friends and your family. Uh, two, we're going to talk about the difference of really being um, proactive with your health rather than being reactive with your health. Those are two really key aspects that you're going to understand. Uh, we're going to talk about spinal hygiene and how to really take care of yourself and talk about uh, why spinal hygiene is no less important than dental hygiene. And the last thing is I'm going to give you some tips on how to take care of yourself at home. Really interesting stuff. The top three things is making sure how you sleep. That's number one. Number two. Um, we're going to talk about if you sit behind the computer or drive a lot, sitting is, is number two. And, and the third thing is just daily posture, especially with laptops and cells, cell phones. So uh, let's get started. Thanks for joining me on my new patient orientation. I want to give you a little history on myself and how I got into chiropractic. Um, my mom was had me at age 40 and... Uh, she was a great lady, loved her. Um, she passed uh, in 2006. And one of the reasons that I really wanted to get into this field and look for a natural way to help people is when I was a teenager, I remember taking her to the hospital and taking her to her doctor's visits. And from about 10 to 18, I was her interpreter and I kind of watched over her files and I helped her go from doctor to doctor. Um, what I noticed was really interesting. What I noticed was we never had definite answers. There was always blood being drawn and lab work being done. And this isn't a, a late, this is in, 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 in the late 80s, early 90s. And with all the technology, even back then with the state of the art hospitals, uh, we still never had answers to what was happening. And um, it was really interesting. My mom had five kids, a uh, stay-at-home mom, and she took care of everything herself. She never had a housekeeper or anything like that, so she moved everything. And I started slowing, slowly seeing the Tylenol bottle, and it was a small bottle, and then it became Tylenol Extra Strength. And next thing you know, we had those uh, large containers of Tylenol Extra Strength. And then she was just plowing through and I, I, I wasn't aware, it wasn't in my radar. But one of the things I noticed is no matter what she was doing, every time we went back, uh, we couldn't get good answers. And I just knew there had to be a better way to restoring health. And I knew it wasn't putting drugs into the body. And I knew that at a very young age. Uh, later on, I was looking for an art form and science that really backed up the best way of natural healing. Chiropractic is the number one uh, form of natural healing. Um, and that's what I looked into and I was blown away. And in the years to come over the last 25 years, I spent my whole entire life, my love, my passion, putting it into this work so I can help you and your friends and your loved ones really stay healthy and stay um, strong. So, um, that's my story. That's how I became a chiropractor. Uh, once I started seeing all the amazing results, even in the clinic when I was in school. I mean, it's one thing when people tell you about these, but it's another thing when you see them. And in my first, you know, first uh, few years in chiropractic, I was sold on how amazing this um, 
feel this. So let's talk about really what we do and uh, how we're going to help you. One of the key principles or the key focuses, now this isn't my PowerPoint, these are just slides. I'm hoping to get to, where is it? Dun, dun, dun. I saw it, there I am, acupuncture. One of the uh, ways and really important factors in chiropractic, it's one of the main principles is, the body has a very natural ability to heal itself. Uh, we know that when we get a cut, um, it's not the Band-Aid or the Neosporin that heals us, it's our body's ability to repair, uh, to put some uh, scab in there and repair the tissue. So our body knows how to take exactly what we ate this morning and turn it into red blood cells. Our body has a great understanding of how to keep our heart pumping, exactly what enzymes are needed to digest the food, make sure you're breathing properly. And I can't tell you the trillions of trillions of reactions that take off in this body that's actually controlled by the brain. Now the brain has to get these signals down and it does it through the spinal cord and the spinal nerve system. We'll look at that chart in just a few minutes. So when the signals are clear and the signals sent down to your body, the body actually does what it's supposed to. It's very, very clear. And then the body itself, certain areas need to ask for information for the body. So they'll send information back up to the brain. And so we have this constant loop. We call this the safety print, uh, pin cycle and it's the safety pin principle and so when the brain and the body have that clarity we've heard it from so many of the uh, uh, of the speakers out there in health and wellness and natural healing is a brain body principle well the brain body principle really has a function through the central nervous system now the central nervous system just happens to be housed inside your spinal column so a lot of people think chiropractors just work with backs and back pain are orthopedic. Not really, we're actually uh, working with my office, I'm working with the central nerve system. I wanna make sure that this is clear so your body is at its optimum functional capacity. So what happens is during life as kids, uh, if you have kids yourself, you have falls, if you have sports injuries, uh, if you have those heavy backpacks that the kids you see it nowadays, it starts to really affect our posture. Uh, I know my son fell at two uh, off the ledge and dropped about two to three feet. That really caused a lot of uh, issues. So it's been uh, luckily he's been under chiropractic, probably the best chiropractic ever. Uh, so it's helped him his body restore. But when we have these areas of the spine that are out of alignment, they start to interfere. They start to interfere with the information, whether it's coming from the brain down to the body or from the body up to the brain. So my goal here is to always check the spine in our office. We're always number one thing we do for everybody is making sure that you have a clear nerve system and we should make sure by making sure the vertebras that house your system are in their perfect alignment, one above the other, and they have motion and they have function. So the more stress we have on our spinal cord, I'm gonna grab something right here. This is uh, a piece of electric, electric uh, um, power line. <coughs> And you can see there is uh, copper wiring and some covering. And so imagine just like this, signals being sent down and then signals being sent up. But when there is pressure on this, again, due to a spine that's out of alignment, due to stress onto the nerve system, we are gonna get some malfunction in the brain, uh, information of these signals going to the brain and going to the body. And when these signals malfunction, our body has a very poor ability to repair itself. That's why certain pains, they don't go away. Certain injuries, they never repair. Not because they can't, it's because the brain and the body are not communicating at their optimal level. That's our focus again, ladies and gentlemen. We wanna make sure that our brain and our body are functioning at their optimal performance, making sure 
that that nerve system is clear. So we're going to be discussing more about this right over here in just a minute. I'm going to show you how that works. We're going to be talking about, uh, again, spinal hygiene. We're going to be talking about proactive versus reactive. And then I'm going to give you some tips. So join me for the next video. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that last video and thanks for joining me on this one. On this little snippet, we're going to be talking about um, proactive care versus reactive care. Um, and so most of the time we are living in reaction. We have the symptoms and then we go and get some help. So the symptom is already there. That means the problem is already there. In the last video, I showed you how the central nervous system sends signals from the brain uh, through all the nerves to all of our bodies. So when we have what we call a subluxation, now you know what a dislocation is, uh, when a shoulder or knee dislocates, a subluxation is when our spine misaligns from the one above or below due to falls, due to accidents, and most of the time it's just repetitive stress, okay? So that's exactly what we see here uh, in our spine. These are all healthy. I'll show you some other pictures and we'll, we'll, we'll pop some in of misalignments and subluxations. But you can see that the brain has central nervous system and those nerves go out directly and indirectly. This is the sympathetic or the autonomic nerve system. And it controls the lungs, the heart, and all of these other organs that we have. Now, over time, when we have subluxations, not only do we have pain such as headaches and migraines, neck pain, upper back pain, and low back pain, but what people don't know and people don't relate is that same area could be giving you lung issues, inability to repair from things like asthma, bronchitis, yearly sickness, all of these things that keep reoccurring and you just never get better could be a central nervous system problem. So what we look forward to is being proactive. If we could keep your spine clear, we can keep your organs functioning at their best. Now, my kids do get sick and so do I, but when we have the flu or we have this, it doesn't last long like other people do for months or, or several weeks. Ours is about a week, week and a half and we're getting back because our clear nerve system allows us to have better function and repair faster because the brain and the body communicate well. Uh, so you can see somebody that might have forward head posture uh, would get a lot of headaches. Now, most people think headaches and migraines are happening in the brain. They've gone to neurologists over the last 20 years. I have this neurologist, they do scans, they have no idea. But most people don't know, 90% of migraines happen right here at C1 and C2 right in this pressure, just due to a misalignment. And it could happen really uh, at an early age, but the symptoms come later. So always understand when you're having a symptom like neck pain or low back pain, might've been caused by an injury that might've been sudden, um, or just showed up out of nowhere, those are even worse, the ones that show up out of nowhere, because the ones that show up out of nowhere kind of tell me that you've had a problem in your spine sitting there brewing waiting for the time to come and get you and cause an issue so when we have people just suddenly hey uh, i just started getting acid reflux that's so common why because everybody's sitting on a computer and they're sitting hunched and all that pressure goes right in there and those nerve Affect the digestive system and suddenly at 35 45 25 they can't eat the foods they needed to eat in the past so again now we have a spine that has subluxation and it's causing this now reactively you're gonna throw some tums and if that doesn't work you're gonna go to a purple pill and if that doesn't work you're gonna keep going to your doctor and addressing all these things because one of the things that happens is when our nerve system goes out of line, one of the biggest things that happen later on is blood pressure, right? The central nervous system controls stress and it controls all the arteries right here, blood vessels, right? So the, the constriction of blood uh, vessels gives us uh, a higher blood pressure controlled by the nervous system. 
So you can do your salts and you can do your medication to take down your blood pressure, but you're really not fixing the problem. You're covering the symptoms. So imagine this, you have a car, right? And your car that you're driving, your check engine goes on. Um, uh, do you just stick your hand in the glove compartment and get out a piece of that electric tape and stick it on your check engine and keep driving? No, you wouldn't do that. Well, some people would. Most people will take it in and get it checked out. They know something's wrong. Our body's check engine light is things like asthma. It's, it's things like digestive issues, constipation, all, anything that could go on. And again, I don't treat any of those. My main focus is making sure that the spine is clear. So when you have a check engine light like headaches, when you have check engine light like back pain, it's your body telling you something is wrong. When you're having constipation or diarrhea, it's your body telling you it's out of order. When you're having heart palpitation or blood pressure issues, it's your body telling you you're not in function. When you're having migraines, um, when you're having dizziness and vertigo, it's your body telling you that something is not right. Now, 97% of our populations goes and takes some kind of drug or medication to cover that up. That's no different than the electric tape on the check engine light. Our proactive way is, hey, how could we be in front of your health instead of chasing your health? And so a lot of our patients, and you might be one of them too in the future, that get regular maintenance care. We have whole families. You're gonna see children in here. Hey doc, why are you adjusting these kids? Uh, next, next, uh, uh, on the next video, I'm gonna talk about spinal uh, hygiene and dental hygiene and when do we usually start dental hygiene do we start in our 30s and 40s when we have cavities or do we start from almost five four or three teaching our children how to brush their teeth and keeping them clean well if teeth are important isn't your nerve system we'll talk about that soon so our goal here is a to get you out of pain as soon as possible that's our first thing and we know within our first month of our corrective care we get people out of pain some people even sooner if it's an acute problem uh, uh, long term our goal is to restore your spine so you don't have this come back so that's two things that we're going to be focusing on while we are taking care of you in our corrective or a pain relief uh, game plan that we have for you. So it's just that you know, understand if you're here in our office with back pain, I'm concerned about the back pain. Now, the pain might go away, but the problem might linger and start showing up somewhere else. That's a concern. Uh, you might have upper back pain that might go away, but respiratory or uh, common colds and bronchial issues will keep re reoccurring. That still comes back to the spine. So everything that you see and everything that people take medication for, there's a huge function that comes back to the nerve system. So by no means am I saying I'm going to fix everything. What I am saying is if your spine and your central nervous system are stress-free, the chances of you living a higher potential and healthier potential are greater. Uh, we keep, uh, in the future, you reduce uh, arthritic changes, you reduce bad posture, you reduce uh, things like osteoporosis and degenerative disc disease by staying out at, under chiropractic care and making sure that your spine is healthy. So this is a huge part of our practice. Our goal here is to be in front of the hockey puck not chasing the hockey puck. We're not here to chase your health. We're here to restore your health and teach you how to take care of yourself and really stay in front of your health by making sure that your spine is subluxation free, that it's strong. It's got these beautiful curves that it needs. We'll, we'll be talking about that. Or if we haven't already, these curves are really important to the spine. So. It's up to you whether you want to pay proactive or uh, a reactive role in your health. Um, I love yoga. Yoga is great. Um, I love uh, doing Pilates and exercising. These things are fantastic. These are supports 
to keeping your spine, but I haven't seen a drug and I haven't seen any kind of exercise that will realign and remove the subluxations from your spine. So uh, those are facts. Uh, I've had people do a lot of PT and in our office and our phase three, we do implement PT because strengthening is important. But at the beginning, nothing's more important than correcting the framework and the alignment of the body. I want to thank you for this uh, presentation. We're going to go and talk about hygiene, spinal hygiene, how to take care of this at home. We just said a couple of things about it today uh, in this little video. But the next little video, I'm going to talk more about how to have spinal hygiene and how to take care of yourself. Hi, and thanks again for joining me, Dr. Ben. Uh, we're doing the series on our new patient orientation. This is part three, where we'll be talking about um, spinal hygiene and really kind of the flow. On the first part, I kind of introduced you to the understanding of chiropractic and how it works with the brain-body communication. The second one, I showed you how to be proactive that rather than reactive. Reactive is way late. Uh, it means something's showing up. That means you're really behind. So it's easier to stay healthy and maintain your health than chase and try to get your health back. And uh, right here, this is one of our, our, our focuses. Um, I want to make sure when we're doing spinal care, or spinal hygiene, these are the things you're going to be doing at home. And we talk about them. It's a really a healthy living lifestyle, right? So eating, we always talk about non-inflammatory foods, especially in your first phase of care. If you're inflamed, if you're acute, you got a lot of pain going on. Healthy eating is one of the most important things that you can do while you're under chiropractic care in my office. So make sure that uh, you're not eating inflamed and inflammatory foods, a lot of sugar, a lot of fructose that could cause inflammatory. We know a lot of grain causes inflammatory response, corn and, and wheat. So these things should be lowered uh, while we get through the care. Um, we'll talk about exercise because that's an, our third phase. Our first phase when we'll work with you is really getting you functioning, getting you out of pain, getting your body working again, getting your posture better, whatever your goals are, that's what we'll be working on. We want to make sure you get rest. I always tell my patients there's three things that could happen while you're under care usually happens in the first phase. Number one is the, per the pain gets worse before it gets better. Remember that. Pain gets worse before it gets better. And this is really important to understand. The, the mechanism behind that is it's very hard to tell what actual bad pain or degenerative pain and healing pain, they don't feel different. So you might feel like, oh, I'm getting worse where you're actually healing, okay? Uh, second part of that is your body might feel very tired. Know that your body cannot repair while you're awake. Repair happens while you're sleeping and you're getting good rest. Okay, so that's what we're going to come about making sure we get good, good sleep and get good, uh, good rest. I got to tell you, your mind process has a lot to do with getting better. I've had patients that in their mind, they were just committed to, to, to their, to their uh, pain, to their suffering. And no matter what we did physically, their mind, their brain that controls everything was really getting in the way. There was some recovery. They were, they were getting better, but uh, they had lost hope. Losing hope is... I can't control hope. That's on you. You got to know that you're getting better. You got to think that every cell in your body is healing. You got to know that there's a better wisdom inside your body that wants you to be well, probably more than you do. Uh, we spend a lot of time trying to really wreck our bodies with the food we eat, what we do to our bodies, how we take care of them. We, we're really not good to our body. So uh, at least make sure that your mind and thought process are good. So when we're talking about uh, spinal hygiene and dental hygiene, you know, uh, we've all been taught about dental hygiene. I mean, we can go back to thinking about it with our parents. Even in schools, we were taught about flossing and brushing probably. We were given this. Why? Because 
Uh, cavities suck, right? They're painful. Root canals aren't fun. Replacing your teeth uh, nowadays has become really easy and more affordable, but it wasn't. So we, you know, we were trained to take care of our teeth. We were trained to brush our teeth, floss, uh, you know, rinse and, and do that a few times a day because back then teeth are really valuable. The, the, the other side of that is we were never taught spinal hygiene. Now, if you watch my first two videos, you'll understand that our spine controls everything. We can replace every tooth in your body, but we cannot replace every bone in the spine. Not yet. I don't think it's coming anytime soon. So wouldn't it be sensible that the area of your body, your brain and your spinal cord that controls every single thing should be taken care of? I see people wearing their backpacks on their cell phones, all of these things. Uh, they do high intensity workout now. So if you're working in Century City and you're sitting for 10 hours and then you go to a high intensity workout, that's brutal on your body. You might get away with it in your 20s and some 30s, but 40 or 50s, that's going to come and hammer you. Okay, so make sure you watch out for that. So when we're talking about maintenance, chiropractic, about spinal hygiene, chiropractic is number one on your list, right? Yoga, so I would say this, chiropractic, getting to your chiropractor is like getting to your dentist for your checkups, all right? A little bit more frequent because that spine controls your entire nerve system. Uh, two, things like yoga and exercise and stretching, they're great, they're like flossing. They're not gonna realign the spine. They help with mobility of the spine, but they will not remove the subluxation. I have not seen it yet. Um, so that's another thing we can do. Massage, acupuncture, these are great adjuncts. Uh, I've never seen, I have acu we have acupuncture in the office. I've yet to see the acupuncture reverse the cervical curve and then that can take the pressure off the brain stem. Just haven't seen it. Great, I love it, we have it, it works. I do a lot of uh, the uh, five elements in my office, so I, I'm, I'm to totally in. But when we're talking structural and central nervous system, it's a different concept. So our goal here is to teach you to take care of your spine. If you have children, I want you to teach your children to take care of their spine, whether it's on an iPad or a cell phone or a laptop or their backpacks, and they should be getting checked. They should be seeing a chiropractor just as they should be seeing a dentist at such a young age to make sure that their teeth are in line. You want to make sure. Don't leave it up. Please don't leave it up to the school nurse. Don't do that. Don't leave it up to like somebody who is not a professional of the spine. Uh, now, it's you can take them to an orthopedic, but if that's the surgeon and uh, he won't do surgery, you don't let them. Somebody who studies, who mastered this, uh, the spine and the central nervous system, chiropractic, right here in our office, we love to take care of kids. We want to make sure that they stay healthy. My children have been under care since birth, and the reason, no different than dental hygiene, spinal hygiene. They don't have any pain. They don't have any issues. We're going to keep it that way, but they do martial arts. They do Krav Maga. They do play basketball. They do all of these things. They got backpacks. They get... I'm making sure when these kids grow up, they're functional, and the teachers can see it in their classroom, and others can see it how calm their nerve system is because they're not acting like you know the kids that you see sometimes out and about just like all over the place so it's up to you i can only teach you spinal hygiene and the importance of taking care of your central nervous system making sure that you're doing healthy living making sure that you're not waiting for the problem to show up before you start taking what not let me tell you once something shows up that means you, you, it's been brewing. Um, we got a lot of patients here feel totally, but doc, I feel great. Yeah, I know. How many people you know who felt great? I know plenty who felt great and a week later they got diagnosed with stage four cancer. Stage four, felt great. They felt great. I had a 42 year old who felt great. A friend, not a patient, a friend. Felt great and had a heart attack with his family in the car. 
all right? So uh, feeling great doesn't mean jack, okay? Doesn't mean anything. You can feel great and have a heart attack. You can feel great and have stage three, four, two, one cancer. You can feel great and have a massive tumor in your brain. Doesn't matter. These things take time to build. What does matter is a clear nerve system checked by us in our office for you and your family. So uh, you're gonna see a lot of uh, neurodegenerative diseases coming up and they're gonna be bombardment. We can see it now. People are losing their memory earlier. They're getting foggier earlier. They're getting dementia earlier. There's no answer in the medical world other than trying, working really hard to keep this and staying proactive. Thanks for joining me. In my next video, I'm gonna be telling you some tips on how to take care of yourself and how to take care of your posture and what to do at home. Thanks again, have a great day.